Okay, as uh, was requested in the classroom during the SDPD workshop that happened in Livonia, there was a request that I would create demonstrations based on ABI and voiceover uh, for the entire uh, content that we went through during that workshop. So the first thing that we're going to do, and we did this on the second day in the workshop, uh, and the reason I'm going to show you this is the TC allow rules. And the reason I'm doing this is because during the first day activity, I noticed a lot of the um, people in the audience were creating actually feature requirements versus functional requirements uh, when we got to the requirements section of this document. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come under Edit, Options, and we're going to do a search for TC Allow. And the one that we're looking for, if I make this window bigger, the one that we're looking for is the one that says TC Allow Child Type underscore SPT9. And what we want to do is we want to remove the feature requirement. And what this will allow us to do is that when you get into the requirement section of this training, that the default uh, will be the functional requirement. So at this point, we can actually now log into Active Workspace and begin our uh, work activity. So I'm going to close this. I am going to bring up Active Workspace. And to log in, I'm assuming that you've already set up all your criteria uh, based on the beginning of the document when it talks about how to set up the VM image. So we're going to log in as SE Demo. SE Demo, which is the user that we will be using during this exercise. Okay, now at this point you have a blank page. In other words, this user has not, um, it's a brand new user and he, he got a task to do to focus on the adaptive cruise control. We're going to walk through the exercise, focus on the adaptive cruise control. So the very first thing that we're going to do, which is on uh, page 18, uh, section 5.1, is we're actually going to do a search for vehicle. So the way you do that is up in Active Workspace in the upper right bar, there's a search bar um, in this location where the mouse is. And we are going to type in vehicle as our first search. Now there's two ways to do this. You can either hit enter on the keyboard or you can click the magnifying glass to do a search. So the active workspace search is going to go off and report back any object that has the word vehicle in the name or description or even in a, a, a property or an attribute. So at this point though, I don't see what I'm looking for in this list at the moment. What I want to do uh, is narrow down this 260 results that had the word vehicle in it somewhere. So I'm going to click on the search filter, which looks like a little funnel. And under type, I am going to do a search for functional placeholder. Now at this moment, I see two objects that have the word vehicle in it. We want the second one. We want the top level parent that is called vehicle functional areas. So I want this to always come back to uh, as I do my day to day activity. And one way that I can do this without searching all the time is to pin it to the home page or the gateway page, sometimes referred to. With the object selected, at this point, I'm going to pin it to the home page. And the way I do that, the little pin icon over here says pin to home. When I click it, you should see a 45 degree angle of the pin as like it was pinned on the wall. So when I go to my home page now, which now it's at the bottom of uh, page 18, when I click on the home page, you will see your tile update with the new functional area that you just pinned to your gateway. 
Now, this is a, a good way to organize your data and that you don't have to search all the time to come back to the data that you want to use based on your day-to-day -day activity. So we're going to do continue on and we're going to expand this out and we're going to do this for a feature and the feature is called adaptive cruise control and we're going to pin that feature also to the home page. By doing this we're going to build up a collection of work that we're going to focus on for our activity. So at this point what I want you to do is I want you to open up the vehicle functional area by clicking on the tile which will load the vehicle functional area what is in, referred to as ACE. So you see the ACE structure over here and the structure for, um, for the functional areas. Now the one thing you'll notice about this type of structure it's very different from our traditional PLM structures that you see in automotive today. Most automotive companies are not managing the functions and the functional areas inside Team Center. What they are managing though is the traditional organizational structures for their product of the vehicle. And what I mean by that, uh, I'm referring to organizations like powertrain, body, closures, exteriors, interiors, um, and so forth. Here you're seeing a different view of the vehicle and this is based on its functional areas. Now the first thing that we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on the safety area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the architectural modeler tab which you do this by clicking on the architecture tab or the highlighted text. Now at this point you may have a blank screen you may not have a blank screen that shows up. If you don't have a blank screen you can click on the reset button to reset your uh, default back to blank screen. What we want to do is we want to turn on the safety function. So at this point you should see an object show up in the graphical viewer called safety. Now I want to expand its children under safety and I know it has children because it has a number two where it says show children. So click on the arrow or the carrot, depends on uh, your terminology. And here what you're going to see is what is referred to sometimes as a block and block view or a nested view. Uh, both terminology has been used for uh, this type of approach. But what we're going to do is we're going to focus on a different view versus the nested view. And to way to change our views, I'm going to click on this icon up here which is the network view and when I click on the network view the system is going to come back and ask you do you really want to change your view and in this example here we do want to change our view so now what you're seeing is that I have three blocks in the network view safety passive safety and active safety I want to expand the active safety out so I can see my features. At this point, now I see that for safety, for active safety, I have two features that are children of active safety. One is the adaptive cruise control and one is collision avoidance. In this example, for this training, we are going to focus on the adaptive cruise control. If I selected this object, which will highlight in the structure and I try to pin this object to the gateway you'll get an error message in the current version of active workspace so what we're going to do to get around this is we're going to open the structure by clicking the open from the drop down list then that feature will open and I know it's open because one it tells me it's a feature up here the adaptive cruise control and two when I look at its children for the adaptive cruise control they are all functions under that feature so at this point I want to pin to my home page this feature so like before I clicked on the pin icon 
and once I know the pin is at a 45 degree angle this object has now been pinned to my home page now you see this on the home page at this point I could leave the tile the way it is but it looks like there's more content information or at least the image looks larger than the tile as a perfectly square tile so one way we can expand this to see the entire image is by right mouse button or mouse button 3 and you'll get a couple of new icons that show up one is to unpin it and the other one is expand we're going to click on the expand and you can just see now what has happened is that it, it expand two times the size of the original tile if I click on it one more time which now the arrow is going in the other direction it's going to leave the tile as width wise two times but now height wise it's going to be one which is going to be the landscape view so let's click this one more time that looks like the view I want to see because now I can see the entire image for that feature and you can see that it's an adaptive cruise control and that there's some type of radar signal detecting the image in front of or the vehicle in front of it so just for display purposes I can identify that feature just based on the image now I'm going to click on the white area and and to click this white area you're going to click on mouse button one when I click on mouse button one you have now saved this tile in its current form which is the landscape view or the landscape uh, uh, tile and this won't change until you change it again now you see this tile we have done nothing this is the original default for the functional area the last thing that we're going to search for is uh, a set of requirements. So up in your search bar again, um, this time I want you to type in product. And if you're following in the document, you should be on page 23. Up in the search bar, it tells you to search for the word product. Just like before, I can either hit enter or the search bar in this case I'm going to hit enter this time and we're going to select our object differently than we did last time using the filter search in this case we're going to use the bars the bar graph here that you're seeing and we're going to come down until we see where it says requirement specification revision this is another way that you can search you notice some other items here have more than one object in this example here though our requirement specification there's only one result which is the one that we want at this point my product requirements is highlighted I want to pin this to the gateway and then click on the home button to go back to my home page or gateway page and what you can see now is that the three objects are now pinned to the home page but now I want to reposition this tile and reorganize my layout a little bit so that um, what I can do later on is if I have a bunch of objects on my tile or on my home page that some of them I'm using today and some of them are, are not in use for a while I can organize data on what's relevant for the work activity that I'm doing so in this case I'm going to right mouse button or mouse button 3 and you should see the little uh, crosshair icon at this point if you mouse button one to drag your tile what you're waiting for is the ghost image to move into this corner and it is a little bit tricky so which you which I just missed it so keep moving it around until you see that block that black line in the upper right corner if I let go of the mouse button at this point that product requirement tile will pin to that location then once I move out into the white space and click mouse button one 
that location it now has been saved for uh, the for this tile so that's one way you can organize data from your day-to-day -day activities is you know some data you're going to want to move to the right that's not relevant for the work you're doing could be you know you're not going to work on this stuff for another month and you want to keep all this stuff that you are working on uh, into the more of the center here because the more and more objects you add it's going to scroll to the right so at this point, we organized our data. We have everything set up to perform the exercise that we're going to go through at this point.